Right, what you've just seen there is my new lathe cross slide drilling assembly, which I've just put together. And I've made it up out of this Matchifit 500 watt um, motor uh, transformer and speed control unit, which I've just acquired. The Myford type milling slide, this piece of uh, mild steel plate, which is 130 millimeter long times 75 millimeter wide and 10 millimeter thick. And an ordinary plastic outdoor junction box, the large one, which measures 100 times 180 times 110 millimeter. And I've used that to make the control box for the electronics. And if you want to, for the final touch, you can get a low cost uh, brother labeling machine and label up all the parts to make it look really good. So you buy the motor assembly as a kit, it's a 500 watt motor which is 100 volts. Um, you get this unit here which is a transformer and speed control unit um, with the potentiometer already um, plugged in and fitted. And the motor has this uh, really nice solid cast aluminium clamp, 52 millimeter clamp, that's the diameter of the motor obviously, and four six millimeter allen bolts to secure it to um, the plate or whatever you're going to secure it to plus it has this ER11 um, collet chuck assembly already fitted and mine came with one um, collet but you can actually buy the kit um, with a full set of collets if you want to and this kit is um, AC 110 volt to AC 220 volt input and obviously DC 100 volt output. The motor also has four spare securing holes around the uh, front flange here and on the back end it has a nice cooling fan. The ER11 collet chuck um, is secured to the shaft with two um, grub screws, one either side. I've undone those grub screws, actually taken them right out and tried to get the um, ER11 collet chuck off of there. But I was unsuccessful in doing that, so whether it's a permanently fixed unit, I don't know. Or whether you have to use an extractor to get it off. Um, maybe that's the case. And maybe I'll try an extractor at some point. I don't want to damage it in any way. Um, so obviously be very careful if you um, try and take this off. I just wanted to actually take it off. Uh, so I have the option of actually fitting a small Jacob style chuck. The kit doesn't come with any instructions apart from this um, label on the front of the power unit, which is mostly in English. And this refers to this uh, green connection block, which has um, six connections. The first two terminals on the far right are for the AC power input. The next two are for the motor DC output. And then there's two more terminals which are connected with a small wire. And this is for an on-off switch. You obviously remove that wire and connect a on-off switch. And then you have a plug unit on there for connecting the actual um, potentiometer. So for the AC power supply, I didn't know which was positive and negative on these two terminals. So I went online and found that out. The motor is DC output, um, so you can actually connect the wires either way, uh, depending on which way you want the spindle to rotate. So this is the correct way to connect it. So it's all very straightforward and easy. I've got my input AC cable here. I've connected the earth to the um, aluminium housing. On the first terminal on the right, it's the brown positive AC input. Then we have the blue negative. On the DC motor output, um, two terminals. Firstly, from the right, we have the black cable, then the red. And um, that's making the motor go in um, anti-clockwise, looking from the front. 
and then I've left the um, connection here as I um, got the unit this is for the on off switch like I said earlier when I get an on off switch I shall um, take that one off and connect the switch up to that and when I switch it on at the wall a little red light shall light on the circuit board and then turn up the potentiometer speed control and you can see in here what a beautiful quality motor this is how quiet it is and how smooth it runs And in the motor specifications it says it has no load speed of 3000 rpm to 12000 rpm plus it also specifies that it's a high precision um, spindle and i've checked mine and it runs dead true the motor fixture plate is all dead easy to make as well just four holes for the eight millimeter um, t-bolts um, to locate in the top and lower um, slots on the milling slide and then I put the motor clamp on the plate and used a transfer punch to get the um, threaded holes for the six millimeter allen bolts um, in position so 75 millimeter is the minimum plate width that you can have um, this is because you need the um, bolt holes as far as you can out um, so that when the clamp goes onto the plate and you're doing these um, T-nut uh, bolts up when you do the nuts up on the top here you don't want them clashing with the sides of the actual motor clamp and on the motor you can have the motor positioned where you like um, in the clamp obviously when this is slackened off you can um, push it uh, back like that on the lathe you obviously want as much clearance as you can so I have it in this um, position like I have here now just make sure it's just onto the housing correctly there not right off the end and I have the clamping slot on the um, this side here so that um, when it goes onto the um, motor plate there and onto the actual um, milling slide the slots on the lower side and there's less chance of swarf and dirt collecting in the actual slot so that's the motor plate bolted on the milling slide I could slide it back another half inch if I want to and then just load that one up and put the six millimeter allen bolts in And for the control box housing, I bought this large junction box and um, gave the measurements earlier. Um, I knew it wouldn't fit when I uh, bought it because this um, plug here for the potentiometer protrudes from the end and it actually clashes with uh, one of these internal corner parts. So what I did was cut one of those corners out on the lower side there's no room to actually get a um, Dremel saw in there so what I used was one of these carbide burr tools and a ball one and I carefully cut away on the inside um, corner go down either side just be careful you don't actually um, cut into the outside um, part so I went backwards and forwards until I cut through on there and then the same on this strengthening section in the corner just go backwards and forwards until you cut through that and then you can use a pair of um, pointed pliers and 
basically put it in the hole um, like that. When it's weak enough, you can actually um, carefully break that out. So I've done that to this corner here. And then the actual electronic box or the um, speed control box fits in that one really nicely. And you can actually just drill down the sides of these uh, before you put it in there um, to give it some air holes if you want to. But there's enough air going in that um, part that I've actually um, cut out. And then on the uh, junction box lid, I drilled a 10 millimeter hole for the potentiometer to go through. And at a later date, I'll drill another hole for the on off switch to go in. So now I have it all wired up and ready to go back in the um, control box. I've used one of these um, connectors here. I think it came off of a light fitting to put an extra long um, cable on for the actual motor um, wiring. The potentiometer is fitted in the lid and the knob on the top here, there's no actual flat on the spindle. Um, you have a little screw on the side here so it's very easy to actually position the um, marker for your minimum and maximum setting. I secure the motor cable um, joiner to the bottom of the motor with a cable tie and this keeps the wires then out of the way of the fan at the back. And then just another quick test before I put it together. And these screws are quite tight on these um, junction boxes so you have to finish off with a hand screwdriver and just remember you don't put one in this corner where you cut the section out inside. <laughs> 